Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to take a look at Slaves to Darkness in 3rd Edition Age of Sigmar. With all of the FAQs out now and all of the rules changes in both the core rules and the General's Handbook, we can now take a look at this with a more holistic view and see what's going on with Slaves to Darkness. So out of the FAQs, I wanted to start there because this is sort of some fundamental changes to things, like just straight up changes to War Scrolls. Um, a lot of the language on the War Scrolls just sort of got cleaned up, um, as is the case across all of the armies. Um, there were some errata from prior FAQs that got carried forward. Um, that stuff, not really concerned about. That doesn't really actually change anything now they still appear in the faqs and they look like they're new but basically it's a new edition so everything in the faq is new at this point but some things really aren't so we had changes to uh oracular visions on the chaos sorcerer lord instead of granting reroll saves it's now granting plus one to save Chaos Warriors, when they have 10 or more models, they used to re-roll their saves. Now they're getting plus one to save. Iron Golems, when they didn't move, uh, or actually I believe it's when they didn't charge, um, they got plus, or they would have gotten re-roll saves. Now they're getting plus one to their saves. So you see a pattern that's kind of going on here that we're going away from re-rolls more towards plus one to save. In general, that is less powerful of a buff so you're going to be a little bit less tanky than you used to be with some of these builds but in general um there's definitely upsides to being plus one to save rather than re-rolling saves um rend is much less impactful to you than it is with re-rolls like the re-roll really amplifies the effect of rend on uh, how much it decreases your ability to save. Um, we also got some changes to Endless Spells. Darkfire Demon Rift. Um, it used to be plus one damage for nearby wizards and Endless Spells. Now it's just Endless Spells uh, that are within 12 inches of it are giving it plus one to damage. And the Realm Scourge Rupture is basically the same as it was before. Um, except uh, its effect of doing D3 Mortal Wounds and having the move characteristic of models that it passes across or ends near uh, now happens on a 2-up instead of automatically. Um, both of those still really good endless spells. They're just a little bit powered down now. Um, they're both predatory endless spells, so their points also went up. Um, but really, the with the double moving now of predatory endless spells they're all twice as powerful as they used to be so some of them taking a little bit of a power down in their language is you know like yes it's making the effect less powerful but it's happening twice as often so it these are really really powerful endless spells i think particularly the realm scourge rupture is just a good value right now So, as I mentioned, less plus one to save, more rerolls. The endless spells are doing less damage. They're still good, except for Doom Sigil. That's still terrible. Um, basically, everybody in your army is going to be on a plus one to save from something at some point in uh, the way that this army is going to be working now. So, uh, we're going to dive into that a little bit more right now. So... We have a bunch of things that already have a built-in plus one to save in their war scroll. Chaos Warriors, Chaos Marauders with hand weapons, their shield that they get with hand weapons gives them plus one to save. So there's they can't get a plus one to save buff from anywhere else, and all of our reroll buffs went away. Uh, same deal with Marauder Horsemen, and our Iron Golems also have that native plus one. So, Oracular Visions from our Chaos Sorcerer Lord and Lord on Manticore 
less valuable than it used to be because we don't have a target rich environment anymore. Um, putting it on, you know, chaos warriors is just negating one rend. Um, you know, same with marauders, marauder horsemen, etc. So your best target for that is generally going to be something along the lines of chaos knights. Um, Nurgle war shrine, same deal. Um, it was giving out a plus one to save buff, still is, um, as well as re-rolling wound rolls. That's less valuable than it used to be, but still not bad. It's at worst negating one rend from your opponent, which is still improving the overall tankiness of your army. Um, it, the moral of the story is that, you know... It, it, virtually everything has plus one to save in this army. So whatever your printed uh, save characteristic is, it, it's going to be increased by one pretty much all the time between Oracular Visions, Mystic Shield, uh, All Out Defense, uh, their Finest Hour, um, Oracular Visions, the Nurgle War Shrine. It, and just the things that are already on their war scrolls. Plus one to save is all over the place in this army now. Um, so I think, in a way, this was already a really, like, tanky, armor-heavy army. And now we're getting all of these additional plus one to save buffs. But the third edition rules are putting a ceiling of plus one to save on all of our save buffs so it's really sort of this weird trade-off that we have going on and i think in net it's hard to say whether we're going to be more or less tanky than we used to be but it's definitely uh something that we need to keep in mind uh other nice change was the generic prayer uh that we have available to us curse is really good and a war shrine can take it that uh, pick picks an enemy unit within nine inches and um, all of your sixes to hit them do mortal wounds which is really great with chaos knights and chaos marauders because they throw a ton of attacks so that really synergizes really well with those um, you know we were kind of going in the other direction previously putting those things into a uh, Nurgle army for Blades of Putrefaction. Now, like, everybody gets Blades of Putrefaction, basically. So, uh, the range is a lot shorter, but it's still really good. Other changes, um, the increased amount of command points that we have make some heroes more viable and some abilities more viable than we were before. Um, all of those command abilities that were on the hosts, you know, that might not have gotten used, I think are all more likely to get used now. So if you're, um, if you haven't been using them, definitely go back and reread the hosts um, and see what commands they're giving you. Cause there's going to definitely be some that are going to be useful. I mean, I think, um, Despoilers in particular, changing the terrain rules uh, of nearby terrain features is definitely going to be super valuable. Um, then we have, you know, the Chaos Lord. He was already good letting you do double pylons. Now he it just has more value because you can, you have more command points around to spread around so you can more reliably be able to use his command ability. It's going to depend on how close he can get to the units that he's buffing though. So that's um, a little bit of a limitation there. The mounted chaos Lords um, giving their plus one to hit and reroll charges um, really good still. Um, I think those were always a solid choice. Dark Oath War Queen now, I think, is an interesting choice because she can add three inches to the charge of Chaos Marauders and Chaos Cultists. Um, that is one that we probably wouldn't have used before, um, but your 
Chaos Marauders are already hitting from downtown with their charge ability, and this just extends that even further. Um, I think it puts them on like a minimum 11-inch charge, something like that. So she can really just make them hit from downtown every time. Um, especially with the new um, the new battle pack and how a lot of the scenarios have you starting closer to your opponent than you used to. Uh, this could really make for some powerful like alpha strike marauder lists and might uh, you know warrant a second look at the um, uh, the cultist units as well. Dark Oath Chieftain, also one that um, wasn't getting played, but I think now could have some value because he essentially has a command ability that is Death Frenzy. Whenever a model dies, it gets to pile in an attack. Uh, and it has to be either Chaos Marauder or Chaos Cultist within 12 inches of him. Like, I, that was already a pretty good ability. And I think now that you just have more command points available to spend to invest in something like that, I think he becomes a lot more valuable. Demon Princes, same deal. They have really good command abilities. Even like the Nurgle Demon Prince, that's, you know, the pretty underwhelming extra D3 mortal wounds. Um, basically, when a unit attacks is, um, you know, if you're just sitting on extra command points, it certainly could be good. Um, and something that you could certainly think about now as well is allying in a Harbinger of Decay to get a 5-up ward save on uh, anybody within 7 inches of him if you're uh, marked Nurgle. That's something that could be really good to do as well. And now that he's like, he's always been a huge command point sink, and now he, I think, becomes more valuable as an ally because you have more command points available. So the Mind Stealer Sphere Ranks getting off of command points here. Um, that's a super cheap monster and has really good abilities. So that's going to let you do your monstrous rampages, uh, you know, prevent units from receiving commands. It's going to destroy terrain. Um, you know, it's a decent little monster for its price. It gives you all the bennies of being a monster and it has a really good uh, always fights last ability as well um, that it can hand out to your opponent. Sorcerer Lord on Manticore, I think, is one that stock is rising a little bit here. He, he's relatively cheap. He's 270 points. Uh, he's a monster and a hero, and he's a good wizard with a good spell. Um, that's a horde thinning spell. And he has oracular vision, so he can hand out plus one to save. He can hand out another plus one to save from uh, being a wizard and casting Mystic Shield. Um, so he's really good. You know, plus you can use your heroic actions from him. You can use your monstrous rampages from him. Really good overall. And then all of this stuff to combined makes Archeon really, really powerful. Like super powerful. Probably not even in the right neighborhood of points anymore. Basically, everybody playing a Chaos Army should probably be running out and buying one right now. Um, but, um, you know, certainly some armies more than others, but he is going to be rocking around on a one up or a two up save, maybe a one up save, um, pretty reliably in this army. And, um, so he's going to be really hard to kill and he's really punchy and he is even more powerful in his own host in this army as well. And just as a side note, uh, in the FAQ for him, he can be included in all of the other God-marked armies as well and does not count as a coalition unit. So that's about it for now, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, as always. If you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, support us on Patreon, come see us on Facebook and Twitter, all of those usual things. 
that are obligatory to say at the end of a video and should probably say it be said uh, somewhere earlier on in the video, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not that good at YouTube. Anyway, I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching.